Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to be examining Ezekiel chapters 9 and 10. Uh, chapter 9 is very short, and so we're going to go ahead and do chapter 10 along with it. But just by way of introduction, a reminder that chapters 9 and 10 go along with chapter 8. And chapter 8 is going to be the vision where God is going to take him, uh, take Ezekiel back to Jerusalem and show him the things that are going on in the temple. In chapters 9 and 10, you're going to have a continuation of this dream or this vision in Jerusalem where God is going to illustrate to Ezekiel what is going on and what is going to happen as a result of the actions of the people in Jerusalem. So let's see what it is that God has to say in Ezekiel chapters 9 and 10. Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 9, we read, Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them, was clothed with linen, and had a writer's inkhorn at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub, where it had been, to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen, who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. To the others he said in my hearing, Go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eye spare nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women. But do not come near any one on whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. And he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were killing them, I was left alone. And I fell on my face and cried out and said, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel in Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. For they say, The Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. And as for me also, my eye will neither spare, nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Just then the man clothed with linen who had the inkhorn at his side reported back and said, I have done as you commanded me. And I looked, and there in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim there were appeared something like a sapphire stone, having the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Then he spoke to the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in among the wheels under the cherub, fill your hands with coals of fire from among the cherubim, and scatter them over the city. And he went in as I watched. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple, when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and paused over the threshold of the temple. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was fill, full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard even in the outer court, like the voice of Almighty God when he speaks. Then it happened, when he commanded the man clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from among the wheels, from among the cherubim, that he went in and stood beside the wheels. And the cherub was stretched out his, or the cherub stretched out his hand from among the cherubim to the fire that was among the cherubim, and took some of it and put it into the hands of the man clothed with linen, who took it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, there were four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by each other cherub. The wheels appeared to have the color of a burl stone. As for their appearance, all four looked alike, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went toward any of the four directions. 
They did not turn aside when they went, but followed in the direction the head was facing. They did not turn aside when they went. And their whole body, with their back, their hands, their wings, and the wheels that the four had, were full of eyes all around. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing, wheel. Each one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, the second face the face of a man, the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim were lifted up. This was the living creature I saw by the river Kibar. When the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them. And when the cherubim lifted their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also did not turn from beside them. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels stood still. And when one was lifted up, the other lifted itself up, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted their wings, and mounted up from the earth in my sight. <coughs> when they went out, the wheels were beside them, and they stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. This is the living creature I saw under the God of Israel by the river Kibar, and I knew they were cherubim. Each one had four faces, and each one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings, and the likeness of their faces was the same as the faces which I had seen by the river Kibar, their appearance and their persons. They each went straight forward. We have a continuation of this vision of the punishment that God is going to bring upon the city of Jerusalem and upon the people of Israel and Judah for their disobedience. <coughs> Excuse me. When we come back tomorrow, we will examine some of the things that we can learn from these two chapters and some of the things that we need to understand from the visions that Ezekiel is being given. But until then, have a great day.